We have special programs that, like in teaching history mm -hmm. without dividing uh, uh, dividing lines. But you mentioned uh, during your speech so so different uh, civilizations, so different cultures, and how can we deal with this? And again, I already mentioned that uh, at Howard University we have a special course, uh, Holocaust and Genocide. Yeah. Visegrad group countries, mm -hmm. and uh, you see, I don't want uh, after maybe a year to show with photos uh, and to put together with the photos in Auschwitz and sure. uh, say the same next sure. again. We like to just, um, you see, the decorate. Mm, never again, but it... Uh, it it always happens again, again and again. Yes, absolutely. Evil. Evil exists out there in the world. There are bad people in the world. Um, I have no answer. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, no negotiation with terror, but we have to prepare our um, society to answer on, on such questions. Sure. So, sure. so I'd say a few things on those. Look, uh, children are going to suffer. Their parents have made really bad decisions. And the children will suffer. I mean, there's a saying in the Old Testament, I think, something about the children will reap the, 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 the ills of what the parents have done. The parents voted for, supported, embraced Hamas. Their children will suffer from that decision. Children didn't do it. They didn't embrace it. And they are innocent victims. And it's sad. And we should feel sadness about it doesn't make a difference. You still have to defend yourself. Um, you mentioned teaching history with no lines. But we need to teach history with lines, and we do all the time. We don't teach that the Nazis were just like the British. We teach that the Nazis were evil and the British were good. Well, Hamas is evil. And we need, that's history. That's fact. If you understand what evil is, they are evil. And we need to teach that. And if we ignore the fact that there is such a thing as evil, then we perpetuate it. We make it possible for it to keep coming back. And at the end of the day, what we need is to fight for a positive vision for the world. And this is the, the long-term solution, right? And the solution is a respect for the individual. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what color skin you have. I don't care what religion your parents had. The question is what kind of an individual are you as an individual? And what we need is to embrace that idea of individualism, individual liberty, individual freedom, and bring it, embrace it, and bring it to the world. And that's true of the Palestinians as well. We need to bring it to the Palestinians. We need to re-educate them, not re-educate them towards a different form of collectivism, towards a different form of sacrifice of the individual, but towards a respect for individual life. And once people have a respect for individual life, we can all live together quite peacefully. It's when we hate somebody else because of their nationality, or because of their religion, or because of their background, or because of the color of their skin, that we get into trouble. It's collectivism and tribalism that ultimately lead us towards war. And individualism is what leads us towards peace. And it's not going to be easy to bring individualism to the Palestinians. But they deserve it just like anybody, any, any other human being does. We should treat people as individuals. First you have to win. Then you have to solve the long-term problem. The long-term problem is respecting individuals and teaching people to respect individuals.